Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tracy Flor Figueroa. I am a interpretive associate with the San Francisco Bay Wildlife Society. And we are here tuning in to you guys. We're gonna be wrapping up Dia de los Muertos. It's a Mexican holiday. Um, it's typically celebrated from October 31st to November 1st. And today I have a special guest with me, uh, our refuge ranger, Gal Marquez. And here he is, he's gonna enjoy. Hello. Thank you, Tracy. Happy to be here. Like she said, uh, my name is Miguel Marquez. I am the urban refuge ranger at San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge Complex. I am located at Don Edward San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge in Fremont, California. And uh, it's a seven refuge, there are seven refuges within the larger complex. And I'm um, located, like I said, in Fremont at Don Edwards. And uh, my job is to uh, connect um, our visitors to nature with outdoor recreation, uh, giving interpretive programs um, and leading tours and attending a lot of outreach events and being visible in the public. So thank you, Tracy, happy to be here on this beautiful yes, day. Yep, you are the face of our refuge, so it's great to have you today. Um, we work very closely, the Wildlife Society works really close with um, the San Francisco Bay Complex. We support their um, outreach and education efforts, and of course, the conservation of um, those protected lands. So today, we're here in honor of Dia de los Muertos. Um, Miguel is, has a Mexican background. I have a Bolivian background that's down in South America. And we wanna connect Dia de los Muertos, like our cultural background with conservation. And um, we're gonna share our experience today with the holiday and also connect it back to uh, wildlife conservation. So Miguel, like you, you tell us about how you celebrate Dia de los Muertos. Yeah, so Dia de los Muertos, thank you, Tracy. Um, it's really beautiful holiday. Um, growing up in a Mexican household, my dad is from Mexico, from Villanueva, Zacatecas. Um, and uh, my mom was uh, is a Mexican descent born here in the United States and uh, up in Oakland, California. I know um, Dia de los Muertos was a time where we honor and um, highlight um, our ancestors and, our, and our, um, our loved ones who have passed. So throughout the house, my mom would have altars and just have um, um, simple altars with uh, photos of my grandparents, photos of aunts and uncles, friends, comadres, tias and tios, um, um, even cousins who have passed. And she would um, have those posted either in the living room or the kitchen and uh, to remember them. And I remember there was always food, always beautiful colors and beautiful flowers, tamales. And it's really, although it is a holiday associated with death, it is also a very colorful cultural um, remembrance of their life. So we wanna highlight their life um, and remember our deceased. So growing up, we would also go to the cemetery and um, bring food, bring flowers and remember and honor our, uh, our loved ones during the, these, this time of year. Yeah. When I moved to the States, um, I never heard of Dia de los Muertos before because mm -hmm. we call it in Bolivia is um, Todos San Todo Santos, where mm -hmm. it also starts like, like Dia de los Muertos on the 31st, and it ends on the 1st. And yes, definitely we um, celebrate our ancestors. And I think most of our focus is on the most recent um, who passed away. Mm. It's kind of a duty in, in the community to, to uh, invite friends, family over to the house and celebrate that person's life, at least for the first three years after their death. Like it's kind of expected. Wow. Um, yeah. 
don't do it. Like you're, you will be shamed in the community. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I remember like when my uncles passed away, uh, our, there was like this one room that was des like designated like a altar and mm -hmm. um, there were, everything was black. I don't know how they did the whole thing, but the whole thing was black. And then we had, you guys have like the marigold, right? Yeah, uh-huh, yep. Yeah, the, the marigold, we, they would decorate a lot of uh, altars with the marigold and at the cemeteries. In Spanish, they call them the cempasuchi flower. Yeah. And, and the marigold is symbolic in, in, in my culture, the Mexican culture, it's symbolic where uh, in Mexican cultures, they use a lot of the marigolds because of its bright colors, its pungent smell. They would go to the cemetery or have your altars in your home with these mm -hmm. flowers because it was believed that the, it would guide the, the spirits and souls of our ancestors. And which is very symbolic too with the monarch butterfly because the migratory mm -hmm. path and the route, this um, incredible route that the butterfly takes from over 3,000 miles away into the highlands of Mexico during this same period of time. So yeah, yeah. beautiful flower, very Very symbolic. pungent, yeah. So what about you? Do you guys, in your culture, have used those flowers as well? We do. It actually, like, the pattern um, mm -hmm. is very similar. We call our flower ilusiones, and, but mm -hmm. it's typically white. Oh, um, okay. When I was talking to my mom, um, she said if the person is um, recently deceased and is was never married, uh -huh. the, the flower is typically black. Oh. Like that's what they um, decorate the altar with. If it was someone who was a child, it, it was white. Oh. Like they call them um, angelito. Mm. And in English, the orange flower is, of course, known as the marigold. Um, yeah. Yeah, very, very symbolic. And, you know, it's also, although Halloween and Dia de los Muertos are two separate holidays, the, the flower even kind of like matches the, the, the color, okay. right? Like a pumpkin and the orange Halloween type yeah. of color. Yeah. Yeah, and also another thing too, how they mix the two. Yeah. Yeah, and another thing, one thing I remember, I remember growing up too, going to uh, Fruitvale every year. Um, me and my three brothers, my mom, we lived on 40th Avenue and Fruitvale was a few blocks. We would walk down to the large festival. They would block off uh, Fruitvale Avenue, and there would be mm -hmm. a big, what is it? A big celebration, a Dia de los Muertos celebration. Um, in, um, you know, the lives of our loved ones with these beautiful flowers, altars. And you also see a lot of the, the skulls, right? The calaveras and the catrinas, which you mentioned, yeah. you know, the dark and black and the dark colors representing death, but these beautiful elaborate face paintings, even like paint on cars and the altars have faces and decorated with colors, flowers, and just bringing, bringing life to death um, yeah. and elevating the deceased. So a lot of good memories. And it's, um, it's our, I feel like our cultures, uh, you know, overlap, right? Mm -hmm. um, even though we're two different places, we still yeah. celebrate. Yeah, the fact that we um, share that, um, celebrate the death in a very, um, like kind of, like the color, the colorful theme, the music, mm -hmm food um because uh, once you open your home up for people to come in and do prayers for the family member the children like they sing for the family member and mm -hmm. when they complete their songs um the widow or widower or parents who lost the, the member, they give them like treats and i think like that's kind of similar to like yeah. how, like, where you get treats for doing That's something. true. So um, that was one thing I saw similar, like yeah. the States did, that we did. 
Um, yeah, wow, that's cool. With the candy, right? The, the, the... Mm -hmm. It was like, um, it looked like gingerbread men, but it was bread. That's, that's, oh. that's what they gave us. Like once we um, completed our song, it was like these gingerbread men. Um, wow. Gingerbread. What? No, but just like a bread man. Was it a was it a shape as a as a person like the actual? Yes. So that's yeah. crazy you mentioned that because yeah, that reminded me like pan de muerto. They you know during it's is like, it the same? Pan de muerto. You go. I mean, you have to go early because they sell out. Uh, Fruitvale, Hayward, a lot of places around so they, the bakeries. Uh, they'll have pan de muerto, and it's like a big. It's not shaped as a person but it's yeah. shaped like a big ball and um, really good sweet bread. I had some, um, I had some last week uh, with my coffee in the morning. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I miss those sweets. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, I'm glad, I'm so happy that you got on the call and said, we can talk about, you know, our culture, uh, yeah. this celebration, our holiday, bringing mm -hmm deceased and tying it into what we do right in in our in our in our jobs yeah so i think it's kind of important to connect our culture with what we do here um, with u.s fish and wildlife and um, we protect and conserve wildlife and mm -hmm. i think culture and conservation should should work together more because mm -hmm. That way we have a better understanding and come kind, of, kind of like feel for, for uh -huh. the land, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I think you, that's a great way to put it is connecting uh, culture and conservation and meshing them together. And that's what I feel like we're doing today is mm -hmm. highlighting our culture, highlighting our where we both came from and our careers in the, in the um, green field and conservation field. So absolutely, I think it's important to uh, really acknowledge that, you know, our culture has been very connected to earth, connected to the land um, and, you know, for generations and, you know, uh, whether it be uh, working, you know, my dad, like I said, he's from Mexico and yeah, they have a very, very close relationship with the land and the seasons as well, planting, mm -hmm. fishing, hunting. Um, and now, you know, me being in this conservation field, um, it's really, really, important and I love the work that we do. I love the work that the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, does um, for the public lands and for the public. Yeah. And uh, I, I wanna really just share my passion with others and encourage them to visit the wildlife refuge, to go and uh, do wildlife recreation and anything like yourself in your uniform and what you do is important to show and highlight your culture. So it's a great day and it's a great holiday to do that today so thank you yeah no this like this holiday really connect because we have a lot like we connect with the flowers we connect I know you said that the butterfly is a good symbol yeah for Los Muertos, so um there is that wildlife connection with this holiday and it, I think it's a good thing to point that out mm -hmm. um our, our mission is to protect um, and conserve that wildlife that is endangered. And um, two of the, there's, there are two main species like in Don Edwards that we're trying to protect, right? The California Ridge Raised Rail and the Salt Marsh Harvest Mouse. Those mm -hmm. are key species. And we want to conserve this land, not just for those species that are endangered, but also for the public, they, it's their own. We're like, it's their land as well. Yeah. To, to enjoy, to uh, recreate at, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're right. You know, as we, we definitely work with our partners to conserve and protect the habitat um, mm -hmm. along with the wildlife. And, you know, tying in the butterfly with the flower, you have the, the habitat and the wildlife. They both need each other along with other, you know, species across the globe. So, um, yes, absolutely. At Don Edwards, we definitely have uh, those, those species that we really, really want to protect and create and protect their habitat. But you brought up a good point, and it's really for, for the benefit 
of the species, but also for the public. Because yeah. I have so much joy looking at birds. So by <laughs> seeing the birds flourish and be happy and flutter around, that makes me happy. So you mentioned mm -hmm. outdoor recreation, um, even just to go to the refuge and just listen to the refuge. It doesn't sound like my neighborhood, like in, in, in my apartment or screeching of the mm -hmm. tires or the, you know, the honking of the horns in, of the cars or the sirens mm -hmm. in my neighborhood. Like going to the refuge is a really peaceful place. And I'm so happy that our friends group and the service protects these places. So yeah, it's definitely a really, really happy to be here and I uh, support our mission for sure. Yes. Speaking of like, even though like we do have these endangered species, um, endangered species, uh, there are species that are no longer with us. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's, 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 yeah, you're, it's sad, right? You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to think about, you know, this holiday and how we, I know myself, I honor the deceased family members, but we also have family members that are uh, feather, scaly and four-legged, right? Our pets. I know yeah. somebody's abuelita had that little chihuahua that was always <laughs> biting my ankles, <laughs> yeah. but you know, RIP to the chihuahua. And now like we, People do honor their pets during Dia de los Muertos as well. Some of the calaveras that you'll see, you know, of images of dogs or their cats or mm -hmm. their skeleton bird. Um, but you mentioned, you know, the species that are no longer with us. Like, this is a good opportunity to highlight those species. For example, the California mm -hmm. flag. We have that beautiful grizzly bear on the California flag. However, there are no grizzly bears in the wild in California, because they are gone, they are lost. You also have the beautiful recovery story of the California condor, beautiful, beautiful bird um, that was almost lost, that was almost extinct, nowhere to be seen again. Um, but thankfully the, the US Fish and Wildlife Service and some zoos and organizations started a recovery program, a breeding recovery program. So we can really enjoy, and I can be happy all inside when I see these birds. I haven't seen one yet. Um, I plan on going down to Southern California to see one, but- They yes, have so, the longest wingspan of a yep. bird. Like, I believe it's like 11 bird. feet, right? Yeah, Huge. it's bigger than six feet. It's like most Huge. humans are- Yeah. And- The tallest they could be is like six feet something. <laughs> So yeah. imagine it's, losing that. Yeah, so sad. It would be so yeah, we want to highlight, you know, bring light to the species that we've lost. We want to mm -hmm. highlight um, you know, our, our pets, endangered and threatened species. Let's bring awareness to those species and those wildlife that we love. Um, large mammals, small fish, uh, even birds. So it's a great way, Tracy. I'm glad that you know you it's a great way to bring the culture and conservation and to highlight this in a beautiful, colorful way. Yes, I, I, I think this is like the perfect kind of cultural reference, mm -hmm. at least like for, for me, for you, because we yeah. grew up um, really um, trying to remember our past um, mm -hmm. members and embracing their lives. So why not do it for the wildlife? Yeah. Yeah. We're currently protecting or, have, or is no longer here, so. And you know what, Tracy, when you, you, you just mentioned something that made me get the inside because we all, well, I don't know, I can't say all, but it's universal family is pretty universal worldwide. Yeah. Family crosses many cultures. I think that's something mm -hmm. that really, really um, we have in common with all humans worldwide is family, extended mm -hmm. family, immediate family, some of your friends you consider family. So when, when honoring and loving and feeling for my family, now I'm also feeling the same way for the animals that I love because I do love these animals. And now it's like, I'm honoring these animals and highlighting and loving these species that we protect. So yeah, and a, the land, you really yeah. could like- um, Absolutely. 
anyone who's been to Don Edwards and like has seen that um, colorful mosaic of yeah. A, oh my God, you really yeah. with that part of the land and um, you, yeah. don't, you don't want that to like no longer exist. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, well, <laughs> should we wrap it up? Yeah, I mean, this has been great. I, I, I'm, you know, I really, really am proud and, and prideful and, and proud to wear this uniform and to be able to work with our friends group like you all at the San mm -hmm. Francisco um, uh, Bay Wildlife Society and really partner with you guys and to continue supporting wildlife uh, uh, protection, habitat protection, and to do things like this today, you know, and really, really um, tie in and reach a, a larger audience and connect culture and conservation. Um, I look forward to doing art projects and maybe doing in-person projects when the time is right um, surrounding these holidays. Uh, so I'm happy. Oh, yes. um, and I believe you have some stuff coming up that you, you've been working do. on. So um, yeah, um, so, tell us about that. All right, so uh, I don't want the light. There you go. Backwards, but we prepared a packet that we'll be posting at in the Don Edwards and the Salinas River uh, National Wildlife Refuge sites, and it talks a little bit about the holiday and also highlights some key species. Uh, we highlighted the uh, western snowy plover and the the Smith Blue Butter, oh, that's the mass. The Smith Blue Butterfly, uh, which mm -hmm. is two endangered species at our most southern refuge. And then you can have fun like coloring in your own mass. That's cool. And, you know, wearing it. I have uh, a mass <laughs> of Salty. Hope I'm not scaring everyone, but yeah, this is my, um, my created mask that Tracy created and I colored it up. So really just tying in wildlife conservation, wildlife awareness with this beautiful, vibrant, colorful holiday. So you guys can make your own masks mm -hmm. at home, um, tape them to your windows uh, and uh, run around a house wearing these masks. Yes. Where would these be posted, Tracy? This, uh, they're this gonna be posted at the Don Edwards um, uh, San Francisco website, website, and then oh, also cool. Salinas uh, River uh, National Wildlife Refuge website, and then awesome. we really, like put the link up with the YouTube um, YouTube video. So definitely go check it out, try it, color it, um, learn a little bit about Dia de los Muertos, and connecting it with conservation. Cool, perfect. No, thank you again for like thank doing you. this with me. Like the, that background, that painting, <laughs> is so beautiful. The colors. Yeah, um, no, this is a this was a great time and a good opportunity. I'm, I was happy to see your 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 the flowers behind you and the, yeah. the germ and really just connect with you and talk about and open up about our um, culture and um, what we do. So thank you so much, Grace. Thank you. All right, everyone. Hopefully we see you again at another segment with our refuge ranger, Miguel. Bye, thank you. Bye.